everybody, Chris here from ProjectOption.com and in today's video we're going to talk about the top three options trading strategies for beginners. So in this video I'm going to walk you through each of the three strategies, give you a very simple explanation as to how they work, then I'm going to show you a quick example to show you how these positions can profit over time, and then I'm actually going to show you real trade examples and show you how to set up these positions with real option prices from today. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So with so many available options trading strategies, where might beginners want to start? Well, there are three strategies we believe are great starter strategies for beginners, which we will talk about in this video, and I'm actually going to show you how to set these strategies up. Now before we get started, I want to say that we're just going to cover the basics of these strategies and we're not going to get into the complex details. But if you want in-depth guides on all of the topics covered in this video, please go to projectoption.com and sign up for a free account with us as you'll unlock all of our structured modules that cover all of these topics in depth and will help you learn faster than anywhere else on the web. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with these strategies. So the first strategy we're going to talk about is the short put spread, which means you're selling a put spread. So selling put spreads is a great strategy because you can gain bullish exposure to stocks with limited risk and the potential to profit even when the stock price falls slightly. So here is how you set up this trade. So first of all, you're going to sell a put and then you're going to buy another put at a lower strike price with the same quantity and in the same expiration cycle as the short put. Now this trade makes money when the stock price remains above the, the put that you sold as time passes and the trade loses money when the stock price falls notably. So keep in mind that through this video we're going to stick to the very basics and we're not going to get into all the complex details but there are links in the video description if you would like to look at each of these strategies more in depth. So with that said let's go ahead and look at our short put example trade. All right, so here is our example trade for selling a put spread. So this this trade is actually a trade that actually happened, and the data that this example is based on is from real option data. So as we can see here, on the very top of this chart, we're looking at the changes in the stock price, and we're looking at the put that we're selling and the put that we're buying. So in this case, the stock price is just above $215 at the start, and to create our short put spread, we're going to sell the 210 put and the two, and we're going to buy the 205 put. Now on the bottom part of this graph, we're looking at the profit and loss of this short put spread. So I've actually pointed to a couple areas on this chart. So on the top part of the graph, I'm pointing to an area where the stock price is actually below the initial price where we sold the spread. And on the bottom part of the graph, I'm showing you that even though the stock price has fallen slightly, the short put spread is up money. And that's because as the stock price is above the short put spread as time passes, that short put spread is going to continually lose value and that's going to create profits as a put spread seller. Now at expiration, which is on the very right of this graph, we can see that the short put spread is up $100 for one spread and that's because the stock price is above our short put spread at expiration. So when the stock price is above the puts in your short put spread, then that put spread will expire worthless at expiration and you'll keep the entire premium that you collected. So in this case, the profit is $100 from selling a put spread and that's that profit is realized at expiration when the stock price is above the short put spread. So now that we've looked at a a, an example on paper of a short put spread. I'm going to show you exactly how to set up a short put spread with current market prices. So let's go ahead and set up this trade. All right, so now that you know how a short put spread is set up and the basics of how it works, let me show you how to set up a short put spread on everyone's favorite stock, which is Netflix. So as we can see here, Netflix has been down the last two trading sessions and is trading right around 139. So based on this price action, let's say that you think Netflix will remain above 135 over the next 60 trading or 60 calendar days. So about two months from now, you think Netflix will be above 135 and you want to place a bullish position with limited loss potential. 
So what we can do here is we can actually set up a short put spread. So since you think Netflix will be above 135 at expiration in two months, we're going to sell the 135 put. And to limit the loss potential, we're going to buy the 130 put against that. So we're going to do the 135, 130 put spread that expires in about 60 days or two months. So let's go ahead and actually set this trade up. So as I said, we're going to target a time frame of two months or around 60 days. So that fits the June expiration cycle. So we're going to open up the June options. And as we said, we're going to sell the 135 put and we're going to buy the 130 put against that. So on the right hand side, we have our put options and we have our bid and ask, which will allow us to sell and buy the put options that we need to. So in the middle here, we have the strike prices and right here we have the 135 strike. So over in the put section, this means that this is the 135 put. So to sell the 135 put, I'm going to hit the bid price. And to buy the 130 put, I'm going to hit the ask. Now this is going to create our short put spread. So as we can see here, we're selling the 135 put and we're buying the 130 put and we're collecting a net credit of $1.43. Now this means that we're collecting $143 in actual option premium because the $1.43 is on a per share basis and the standard option contract multiplier is 100 since each option represents 100 shares of stock. We're going to multiply this $1.43 by 100 to get $143 of maximum profit potential at expiration. Now this means that if Netflix is above 135 at the time of June expiration, which is in 58 days, then the 135 put and the 130 put will both be worthless in which case this spread will be worth $0. And if the spread is worth $0 when we sold it for $1.43, our profit will be $143 per put spread. So this is how you would take your trading assumption for Netflix and turn it into an actual position. And in this case, we're talking about a short put spread, which means we're selling a put and then we're buying another put at a lower strike price. All right, so option strategy number two for beginners is selling iron condors. Now selling iron condors is a great beginner strategy because the position is non-directional, providing profit potential in range bound stocks. Now the trade can be as conservative or as aggressive as you'd like. And that's really one of the benefits of trading options is that you can make positions very aggressive or you can make them very conservative based on your risk preference, account size and whatnot. So, here is how you set up an iron condor trade. So you're going to sell a put and then you're going to buy another put at a lower strike price. So that's actually strategy number one, which is selling a put spread. And then you're actually going to combine that with selling a call spread, which means you're going to sell a call and then you're going to buy another call at a higher strike price than the short call. Now the trade makes money when the stock price remains between your sold options as time passes and the trade loses money when the stock price moves substantially in either direction. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at an example of an iron condor trade and see how it performs over time as the stock price is moving. So here is our example iron condor trade. So in the top part of this graph we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to our, our options in this iron condor position. So in this position we're selling the 216 put and we're buying the 209 put to create our short put spread. And for our short call spread, we're selling the 230 call and we're buying the 234 call. So this strategy will make money and will be maximally profitable at expiration if the stock price is in between our short put strike of 216 and our short call strike of 230. So as we can see here on the bottom part of the graph, we can see the profit and loss of this particular iron condor position over time. Now on the top part of the graph, we can see that the stock price clearly remains between our short put and short call strike price as time passes. And that means all of the options in this iron condor position are going to decay as time passes. Now since we sold this iron condor, we want these option prices to decrease. So when these option prices decrease from the price that we sold them at, we start to see profits as iron condor sellers. So on the bottom part of the graph, 
we can see that as time is passing and as the stock price is in between our short strikes, we can start to see profits gradually over time. Now, at expiration, we can see that the stock price is in between our short put and short call strike price, and that means we're going to realize the maximum profit potential for this iron condor. And in this case, that means we're going to make $118 from selling this iron condor. So now that we've walked through a example iron condor trade, let me walk you through how to actually set up an iron condor with real option prices as of today's market action. All right, so now that you've seen the basics of how an iron condor position works, let's go ahead and set up a real iron condor position in IWM. So IWM is the Russell 2000 ETF. So as we can see here, IWM has been trading between $130 and $140 for the past four to five months. So let's say we think this range is going to continue and we want to profit from that by creating a market neutral strategy that profits when the stock price remains in a certain range. As we know, the iron condor sounds like a perfect fit for that. So we're going to create our short iron condor position by selling the 130 put and we're going to buy the 125 put against that. And then we're going to sell the 140 call and we're going to buy the 145 call against that. So why would we choose these strike prices? Well, if we think IWM is going to remain between 130 and 140 over the next X number of days, in this case we'll use around 60 days, then we want to sell a call with a strike price of 140 and we want to sell a put with a strike price of 130. Now to create the spreads, I'm actually just going five, five points beyond both of those options. So since we're selling the 130 put, we're going to buy the 125 put, and since we're selling the 140 call, I'm going to buy the 145 call to create our iron condor position. So let's go ahead and take this basic trade idea and turn it into an actual options trade. So I'm going to go and open up IWM options and we're going to go to the June expiration cycle since we think this trading range will persist over the next two months. So I'm going to open up IWM options expiring in June and as we said before, I'm going to sell the 130 put and I'm going to buy the 125 put against it. So I'm going to sell the 130 put and I'm going to buy the 125 put and that's going to create our short put spread. And then I'm going to sell the 140 call and I'm going to buy the 145 call against that. And as we can see here, this creates our short iron condor position in IWM that expires in June, which is 58 calendar days from today. Now, as we can see here, this spread is trading for a credit of $1.97. Now, that means that if IWM is between $130 and $140 at expiration, then all of the options in this iron condor will expire worthless, in which case this iron condor will be worth $0. So whenever you sell an option, you the best case scenario is for that option to go to $0 since You'll be, you'll be keeping all of the premium that you sold those options for. So in this case, if we sell this iron condor for $1.97, that's actually collecting $197 in premium for one iron condor position. And if this iron condor expires worthless, then we'll keep $197. So let's go back to the chart here. So if we sell this particular iron condor position, and IWM remains between our short put strike of 130 and our short call strike of 140 through the, the expiration in June, then all of these options will expire out of the money, which means they'll be worthless, and we'll keep the entire premium that we collected for selling the iron condor, which in this case is $1.97, which translates to an actual profit of $197. So this is how you would take your market neutral assumption for a stock and convert it into an actual trade in the form of an iron condor. All right, so the third and final option strategy for beginners is the covered call. Now covered calls are great strategies for those with long stock investments because the strategy reduces risk on stock investments while also providing profit potential when the stock remains flat or even decreases slightly. So by selling a call option against your shares of stock, you create more than one way to profit. So here's how you set up the trade. 
you're going to buy 100 shares of stock, or if you already own 100 shares of stock, all you have to do is sell a call option against those shares. So you're going to sell one call option per 100 shares of stock that you own. Now the trade makes money when the stock price increases or remains flat as time passes, and actually the stock price can even decrease slightly but not too much. Now the trade moves, loses money when the stock price falls but can make money if the shares fall only slightly and that's because you're going to collect a premium for selling that call option and that's going to provide some downside protection. So let's actually look at a covered call example and let's compare its performance to just owning 100 shares of stock. Okay so here is our example trade for a covered call. So on the top part of this graph we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the call option that we sell as a part of our covered call and also our break-even price for that covered call. Now on the bottom part of the graph we can see that that dark line is the covered call profit and loss and the yellow line is the profit and loss of just owning a hundred shares of stock. So basically owning a hundred shares of stock without selling a call option against it. Now the first thing I want to point out about this particular example is that the stock price only ends 15 cents higher than where it started. So for a for an investor who owns 100 shares of stock without selling a call against it, that means their profit is going to be $15, which we can see on the bottom part of this graph. Now on the other hand, this particular covered call position had a profit of $600 at the end of this period. Now that tells us that even though the stock profits were only $15, there was an additional $580 in profits that came from selling that 120 call option. And since the stock price was below the call strike price of 120 at expiration, the investor who sold that call option against their shares gets to keep all of the premium for selling that call. So on the bottom part of this graph, there's an annotation that says, the money collected from selling the call option provides protection against share decreases and enhances returns when the stock price remains flat. So as we can see, the long stock position of 100 shares reaches a loss of about $750 at the lowest point, compared to only $250 for the covered call position. Now that's because when you sell a call option against your shares of stock, that call option is going to provide downside protection when the stock price decreases. Now that's because when the stock price decreases, you're going to have losses on your shares that you own, but that short call that you sold, the call that you sold is going to decrease in value, and when you sell something and it decreases in value, that generates profits for you. So when the stock price decreases, that short call is going to lose value, which is going to offset the losses from the shares that you own. Now, the big downside to selling a covered call is that if the stock price increases substantially, you actually won't participate in all of those gains. So by selling a call option against the shares that you own, you're agreeing to sell your shares at the strike price of the call that you sell, should the stock price be above that call's strike price at expiration. Now there are ways you can avoid losing your shares, but either way, no matter how you approach it, if you sell a call against your shares of stock and the stock price explodes, your profit potential will be far less than it would be if you had not sold the call. So a covered call is only a strategy that you would use if you are mildly bullish on a stock and is not something that you would use when you are extremely bullish on a stock because if you're extremely bullish, then you want all of the upside potential that you can get. So the good news is that most of the time, stock prices don't explode to the upside. And by implementing a, a mechanical covered call strategy, you can lower the cost of your shares and create a stream of profits when the stock price remains flat or even increases slightly over time. So now that you've seen a covered call example trade, let me walk you through how to actually set up a covered call position using real options from today's trading session. All right, so the covered call position we're gonna use is going to be in EWZ. So EWZ is the Brazil ETF. So let's say we're mildly bullish on EWZ and we want to create a position that profits from stock price increases but can also have a little bit of downside protection or even profit if the stock price remains flat. So since EWZ is trading for $36.46, we're going to need to buy 100 shares of stock before selling a call against it. 
So to buy 100 shares of stock, that's going to cost us $3,646, which is just 3646 times 100. Now let's say we think EWZ might rise to 38.5 by the June expiration cycle in about 60 days. So we can actually sell the 38.5 call against the long shares that we've just purchased to create our covered call position. So let's see what price we can put that on for. So we're going to buy 100 shares of stock of EWZ for $36.46 per share, and then we're going to sell the 38.5 call in June for $1.04. So we can actually do this in one trade by doing covered stock. So as we can see here, it brings up a price of $35.42. Now that's because we're buying 100 shares of stock of EWZ for $36.46, but we're also selling a call option against it for a credit of $1.04. So when you do $36.46 minus $1.04, we get to $35.42. So basically, if we buy this position right here for $35.42, if EWZ is right at $36.46 at expiration, this 38 and a half call is going to be out of the money and it's going to expire worthless which means we're going to have a profit of $1.04 per share, or $104 overall. Now we're going to have no profits and no losses on our long stock position, which means we're going to keep $104 in profits, and that's going to be entirely from selling this call option. So by creating a covered call position, we actually can profit when the stock price remains flat. Now since we put this on for $35.42, that means that's actually our break-even price. Now that's because if the stock price falls to $35.42, then we're going to have a loss of $1.42 per share, or I'm sorry, $1.04 per share. And if the stock price is at $35.42 at expiration, then this 38 and a half call will expire worthless, which means our profit on this short call will be $1.04 per share. So since we lost $1.04 per share on the long stock that we have, and we had a profit of $1.04 on this short call option, we break even if EWZ is at $35.42 in 58 days. So this just goes to show how setting up a covered call position can allow some downside movement in the stock price because that premium that you collect from selling the call will give you a downside buffer should the stock price decrease. And as we discussed before, that's because when the stock price decreases, this call option is going to lose some value, and at expiration it'll be worthless, which will offset some of the losses from owning EWZ shares. So this is just a quick example of how you can set up a covered call position in a stock that you are mildly bullish on. So as I said before, you wouldn't want to use a covered call position if you are extremely bullish because by selling a call option against your shares of stock, you do cap your upside. So in this particular example, if EWZ blasted off to, you know, let's say $41, we actually wouldn't participate in all those gains because since we sold the 38 and a half call against our shares, we would be obligated to sell our EWZ stock at $38.50 per share. But for that obligation, we're collecting a premium of $1.04. So if you want to learn more about the covered call strategy, please click on the link in the video description. Thanks so much for watching this video, everybody. If you found it informative and helpful, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get videos just like this one in the future. Also, if you want to check out some of our other videos, go ahead and click on the playlist link on the right-hand side.